Hello friends! While all football supporters demand the number one game to develop steadily according to fair play principles, some players help themselves on the pitch with unusual, but still not prohibited methods. Is there black magic in football, and does it really give teams luck and strength on the way to success? We are about to tell you about such cases, so you can draw your own conclusions. Let's get going. In 2016, during a match between African teams Mukura Victory and Rayon Sports, the guests forward Musa Kamara, whose side were losing 1-0 in the 39th minute, missed a chance by hitting the crossbar. The footballer was upset but remained in the opponent's penalty area, spilling something at the goalpost of Mukura in a couple of seconds. For this, the opponents immediately tried to beat him up, though Musa ran away and passed the evidence to his teammates. Presumably, it was some kind of powder. But what actually happened? Why is there so much anxiety around these harmless actions? It turned out that Kamara decided to use juju, a ritual during which people throw an appropriate amount of chosen object or amulet at each other in order to induce the supernatural evil forces and energies. Interestingly enough, the ritual is a common thing in all walks of life in West Africa. By doing this, Musa tried to help himself score, depriving the goalkeeper of the opportunity to save his shots. Of course, this may sound rather odd, but after six minutes, Kamara equalized the score in the game. Coincidence or magic? Think of it in the meantime. Subsequently, the Rwandan Football Federation took this episode very seriously and soon even introduced special bans. In statutes, we don't have any law punishing the use of witchcraft, because there is nowhere in the world where it has been proven that it can influence the outcome of a game. However, with the violence between players because of allegations that one team is using it, we have decided to enact laws, said in the statement of RFF. Since those days in Rwanda, footballers have been prohibited from using magic on the pitch or from any suspicious activity in that direction. In case of disobedience, players are fined 116 euros. In case the whole team is involved, the federation will fine it with a 3,400 euro punishment and get three points deduction. Bit of a mess of a story, isn't it? No bans exist for footballers if you are a ball boy. In Africa, there was also such a case when Juju was used by the boy in charge of serving the balls. He ran out onto the pitch and threw something into the goal of the team against which he was rooting for. The goalkeeper noticed his trickery and decided that he did not want to continue the game. He was that afraid of the black magic the boy got to use. Seems like he thought of the curse, letting him no longer be able to save a single shot. What's more, the young cheater did not regret anything. He returned to the edge of the field, looking completely innocent. Six years ago, the national teams of Wales and Israel met in the group qualifying stage for Euro 2016. By the time the leader of the Dragons, Gareth Bale, got the right to take a free kick, his rivals were in a panic as the distance to the goal was very dangerous, and Bale was still at his best at that time, knowing how to make use of such moments. Suddenly, Israel's defender, Tal Ben Haim, decided to step in. He shouted something in the direction of Gareth and began waving his arms, as if drawing on Bale some kind of invisible evil witchcraft-type energy that should prevent him from slotting the ball. And you know what? The spell actually helped. The Welshman shot above the bar and the danger was avoided. Let's go back to African football and the real situation that occurred back in 2017. During the Africa Youth Cup of Nations, in the decisive match, the national team of Zambia faced Senegal. The Zambians were the host team of the tournament and were considered to be the favourites. By the 58th minute of the tie, Zambia was already leading with a score of 2-0, and Senegal's condition was close to hopeless. The losing side realised that only black magic could save it all. Having earned a free kick on the left flank of the attack, the Senegalese moved on to the action. While the Zambian goalkeeper was arranging the wall, Senegal striker Ibrahima Ndiaye approached the opponent's goal, took something out of his socks and threw it straight into the net. One more example of the juju ritual here, but in this case, the thrown object was a dead bat. 
The Zambian players saw what NDIA had done and immediately complained to the referee. The conflict quickly turned into a scuffle. From the point of view of African people who believe in these rituals, NDIA acted in an unsportsmanlike fashion. From the viewpoint of Europeans, Asians, Latinos and others' perspectives, this was too much. In fairness, fate did not favour Ibrahima and the score remained the same. Zambia won the final with a score of 2-0 on the scoreboard. A very recent case which happened in November of this year. During the qualifiers for the 2022 World Cup, representatives of the Algerian national team accused the national team of Burkina Faso of using black magic. The Algerians even summoned a shaman to remove the spell that the opponents had imposed on the pitch of the Mustafa Chakar Stadium. The exact details were not disclosed, but according to the information of journalists, before the game the Burkinians repeated the same procedure as the previously mentioned Zambians. They also threw a dead bat on the field to bring them good luck in this important clash. Sure enough, there was a big scandal, but it's good that the showdown ended in peace, with a 2-2 draw to be exact. The efforts of the Burkinis really paid off. For them, this result was much more pleasant than for the enchanted Algerian. Moreover, after the final whistle, the leaders of the Algerian Football Association even called an exorcist to the stadium to get rid of all ritual activities and their consequences. Such are the African peculiarities. Not only little-known people like to resort to black magic, but also those names who we know pretty well. For example, the former striker of Marseille, Swansea and West Ham, André Ayou. Before participating in the 2017 Africa Cup of Nations, he was early to the pitch, praying and sprinkling some powder around. However, the superstitions of Romelu Lukaku are even more striking. In the past, Everton owner Farid Moshiri revealed that the Belgian forward refused to renew his contract with the Toffees due to voodoo predictions. With Romelu, I wasted two summers trying to keep him. I spent three months with his agent, him, his mother and his family, and we managed to keep him for another year. Then, last summer, we offered him a better deal than Chelsea. Whatever they offered, we matched, but he just didn't want to stay. I can assure you, we tried everything to keep Rom. If I tell you what we offered him, you wouldn't believe it. We offered him a better deal than Chelsea and his agent came to Finch Farm to sign the contract. Then in the meeting room, Rom called his mother. He said he was on a pilgrimage in Africa or somewhere and he had a voodoo and he got the message that he needs to go to Chelsea. I used all my charm to keep him and I flatly failed. This is unfortunately the world. Ultimately, we lost money. To buy Rom now would be £120 million. The issue was his brain had gone. Moshiri shared in an interview with The Guardian. Despite the matter above, we all remember Lukaku moving to Manchester United and performing there for two years. After that, Romelu moved to Inter and only this summer signed a contract with Chelsea for the second time in his career. The prediction obviously came true, but Big Rom still needs to prove that his Stamford Bridge comeback is not in vain. Friends, if you like to listen to cool quotes, support our new project, Change Your Life. The Top Football Channel was with you. Thank you all for watching and bye-bye.